Hey YouTube, this is just a quick preview of a um, parallel SCARA um, bot that I'm working on for a 3D printer, but uh, at first it'll probably be a plotter. Of course, it could be any kind of CNC machine thing, because the main thing is the XY um, control that I'm trying trying to do without any like expensive um, linear controls. And also I'm trying to make it very 3D printable um, and then all the vitamins can be buy, bought like at local hardware stores. So um, basically we'd move around like, the, like this. Um, never crossing this point because that would be a singularity because of course these two angles would be the same there and there. So it only moves around in this, this area here. Um, so these brackets are currently PLA, like I've actually broken them a little bit, so I'll probably try something else afterwards. And then these are like, I've uh, printed the motor captors already, but um, I'm still waiting for the motors. I'm going to try um, with, oh, that's another thing I'm trying. Um, I want to try and use d uh, geared DC motors with encoders to do like closed loop control, because I'm trying to make like a printer that's um, really quiet as well because stepper motors tend to be really loud. Um, so yeah, like <laughs> trying out like multiple things at once, which is probably ill-advised. Um, so these are just like M8 um, bolts. These are about 100 millimeters. That's not critical. Like you can, the design is all open scat, so it's easy to uh, design shorter brackets for like say 75 millimeter bolts or whatever. Um, the, these parts, uh, the, these two arms, and then also this one motor, motor coupler, are actually uh, printed out of uh, Tolman Alloy 910, just a kind of nylon. So the problem is that they're not as rigid as PLA, but like because I'm threading through this to get the, um, like I'm tap tapping a thread through this to get the M8 bolt through there, I kept like melting and breaking the PLA, so I'm trying nylon. I'm just going to try it uh, more and more more infill until I get something rigid enough. I actually kind of like this. It's, it's really strong um, and very forgiving. Uh, so it's like this actually uses 10 6 or 8 bearings. It's like there, there, and then obviously on the other side as well. And then these things have one at the top, one at the bottom. And then this is just another M8 bolt and then like and that. It's a little washer there um, and then also on the, on the uh, bottom. I don't actually know if th those are really necessary. And then this in the middle is an M8 30 millimeter uh, washer that I put in there so that uh, so that this won't like you know like there won't be a gap there and this this can bend a little bit. Now it adds a little bit of friction, which I'm thinking might actually be beneficial because due to the momentum, like when these things move around, these tend to want to like overshoot at each joint. So I think that might actually help with that and also dampen some of the, you know, like backlash and whatever else. So it's actually really rigid other than, you know, it's actually just this nylon that can bend, but really I'm, I'm wish moving it quite a bit before it can bend. So like with the movements I'm anticipating, like I don't think it'll actually wiggle around. It's like a vast improvement on what I had at first. Um, of course I could, you know, like loosen these bolts um, if the, if the friction is too high and I can also use graphite in between I find that especially with PLA I haven't tried the nylon but like graphite like is an excellent lubricant for that um, I had these little holes in the middle because if, before I came up with that idea I was going to have like rubber bands to tension it to try and remove some of the backlash because um, I ordered some geared DC motors from Pololu that are already on the way I'm just waiting for them to plug them in um, but I, I suspect that they'll have like about a, one, one or two degrees of backlash. So I'm thinking some friction in the system might, might help with that because one or two degrees with this 120 millimeter long arm is like massive, of course, the deviation that you get at the end. Um, I'm trying to go with like as high gear ratio as, as possible for the motors so that I can get, you know, like the most possible number of steps per rotation because you're only going to go over, I think, about maybe as much as like 120 uh, degrees or so to move. Another cool feature of the, um, so yeah, so you, I meant that you're not going to use the whole rotation, of course, so you don't get like the full, you, know, you don't actually get that many steps. Um, another cool feature about this is like these arms from the middle to the middle 
uh, you know, like of the where the axis mounted is 120 millimeters, and then th these are like 240, like twice that. Out. Like I, I um, simulated this in old JavaScript or Paper.js actually, and I th realized that it's sort of the best trade-off, well it seems anyway, um, to have the distance twice. So see, so that's why you can make like a perfect rectangle like this. Um, so that seems to be the best, but because uh, that's uh, printed like this at 120 millimeters long, then you need like a little bit of extra space for the bearings and like, you know, like the skirts around and whatever else. So on my 150 millimeter bed, print bed, uh, square obviously, then um, uh, I actually print this diagonally. So so that just, just barely fits. But what's cool is this can print like what, uh, longer length than that. I'm um, on so that this printer can actually print a bigger version of itself, assuming it has the accuracy for that to work. Um, yeah, like all of the parts are just sort of M8 bolts and nuts and six or eight bearings and like some washers, and they're all pretty printed. And I'm I'm thinking that this this feels really good this motion. So we'll see once the motors arrive. Hopefully it all works out. If it doesn't, I can always switch to like stepper motors again, I guess. So yeah. I'll keep you posted.